China has positioned itself as the global frontrunner in both the production and consumption of electric vehicles EVs. The year 2022 witnessed an extraordinary sale of 6.8 million electric vehicles within China, a staggering figure when compared to the United States' more modest sales of just under 800,000 units during the same period. The impact of Chinese manufacturing in the electric vehicle sector is formidable, with over half of the world's electric vehicles originating from Chinese brands. Additionally, China boasts the world's most extensive charging network, an accomplishment highlighted by the addition of 649,000 public chargers in 2022, constituting over 70% of the global charger installations for that year. This is Money Dynamo, welcome to the channel. Subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you don't miss any of my videos. Yet, beneath these impressive statistics lies a perplexing paradox, as reported by Bloomberg, unveiling an unexpected site in at least six Chinese cities, landscapes resembling car cemeteries where thousands of nearly new electric vehicles languish in neglect amidst weeds, rubbish, and abandoned parking lots since 2018. This revelation prompts profound questions. Why are thousands of almost new electric cars abandoned in China? What factors contribute to the increasing number of electric vehicle manufacturers going out of business in the country? And why does China seem to squander resources in this manner? The genesis of China's deep dive into electric vehicles can be traced back to the early 2000s, a period when fully embracing electric vehicle technology was deemed a global risk. Despite the experimental forays by companies like General Motors and Toyota, China, grappling with severe air pollution from rapid industrialization, recognized the urgency of addressing environmental concerns without compromising industrial growth. The vision of massively adopting electric vehicles gained traction as it presented a dual solution, mitigating pollution and reducing dependence on imported oil. In response to these challenges, the Chinese government, equipped with substantial advantages such as large manufacturing capacity, abundant labor force, and significant refining capacity for lithium, a crucial component in electric vehicle batteries, devised a strategic plan. In 2009, the government initiated a series of subsidies to incentivize electric vehicle companies to manufacture buses, taxis, and private cars. Over the span of 2009 to 2022, the Chinese government injected more than $29 billion in subsidies and tax breaks. Moreover, national electric vehicle companies received vital support through public contracts, ensuring their survival during their nascent years. Motivated by government subsidies, a multitude of automakers from various corners of China, regardless of their experience in the electric sector, embarked on the mass production of electric vehicles. This led to the creation of a significant number of early-stage electric vehicles, relatively straightforward cars with batteries capable of traveling about 100 kilometers on a single charge. However, the abundance of electric vehicles far exceeded consumer demand. In response, some manufacturers opted to establish or support trucking companies that would purchase the surplus vehicles not bought by the public. Initially, these vehicles found buyers in Uber-type transport-sharing companies, acting as a means to absorb the burgeoning inventories. Yet, the fundamental issue persisted. If these electric vehicles weren't being embraced by the general public, why continue their production? The answer lies in the simplicity of maintaining government subsidies. Manufacturers, eager to sustain subsidies granted for each electric vehicle sold, resorted to creating subsidiaries that acquired vehicles from growing inventories. Some companies even resorted to fraudulent practices, such as falsifying electric vehicle license plates or registrations that didn't genuinely exist. One noteworthy instance was Suzhou Jamsi, a relatively unknown EV manufacturer, applying for subsidies for selling 25 EVs in the first half of 2015, only to apply for subsidies for selling 3,000 vehicles in December of the same year, just before the government subsidy cut. Following a government investigation, it was revealed that the figures were fraudulent, with dozens of companies fraudulently claiming at least $1.3 billion in grants. 
This is crazy, isn't it? What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments. Recognizing the unintended consequences of subsidies, the Chinese government initiated a subsidy reduction in 2019, leading to the anticipated downfall of numerous companies unprepared to navigate the real market without state support. The current landscape reveals an estimated 100 EV manufacturers in China, significantly fewer than the 500 existing in 2019. Many of these companies have faded away, primarily due to their initial focus on producing vehicles solely to capitalize on subsidies, without offering quality design or features. The reduction in government subsidies and increased competition quickly rendered these early-stage vehicles obsolete. This narrative brings us to the now famous electric vehicle graveyards in China, from which two significant ideas emerge. Firstly, the rapid disposal of electric vehicles contradicts the initial goal of reducing pollution, as the environmental toll of manufacturing batteries, intensive mining, and the proper disposal of hazardous materials stands in stark opposition to the government's original intentions. Secondly, the prevalence of resource wastage in China while common, highlights the centralized nature of the economy, enabling the government to channel substantial investments into specific industries, sometimes resulting in unintended outcomes like fraud. This scenario echoes previous instances of excessive government intervention in China, such as the creation of ghost cities and ambitious projects in Africa. Ghost cities involved the construction of numerous residential buildings without real market demand, causing economic challenges in the construction sector. The present case of abandoned electric vehicles, while lacking the same macroeconomic impact as construction, serves as yet another testament to the repercussions of excessive government intervention, generating undesirable incentives in the market. Beyond the challenges outlined, the saga of abandoned electric vehicles in China opens up broader reflections on the global impact of the electric vehicle industry. The consequences of China's abrupt disposal of electric vehicles reverberate beyond its borders, influencing the global push towards sustainable transportation. The waste generated not only undermines the immediate environmental benefits of electric vehicles but also casts shadows on the viability of such technology as a solution to global pollution. The environmental ramifications extend to the life cycle of electric vehicle batteries. The disposal of these abandoned vehicles raises questions about the proper handling of batteries containing hazardous materials. The specialized disposal process required for electric vehicle batteries becomes crucial in preventing environmental contamination. As the world increasingly transitions to electric vehicles, finding sustainable solutions for the entire life cycle of these vehicles, from manufacturing to disposal, becomes imperative. Moreover, the financial implications of the subsidy-driven surge in electric vehicle production and subsequent fallout in China serve as a cautionary tale for other nations navigating the electric vehicle landscape. Governments worldwide promoting the adoption of electric vehicles must carefully balance incentives to avoid the unintended consequences witnessed in China. Striking the right chord between incentivizing the industry and ensuring a sustainable market demand is vital to prevent a cascade of issues similar to those experienced by Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers. The case of abandoned electric vehicles also draws attention to the role of technological rivalry and innovation in the global automotive landscape. The competition between traditional automotive powerhouses and emerging players, particularly China, underscores the transformative nature of the electric vehicle sector. It prompts a reconsideration of global supply chain dynamics, as countries seek to secure their positions in the race toward electric vehicle dominance and reduce dependencies on traditional fossil fuel industries. Additionally, the Chinese government's shift in subsidy policies reflects the evolving understanding of market dynamics and the recognition of the need for a sustainable electric vehicle industry. Other nations can draw lessons from China's experience to develop policies that encourage long-term growth and innovation in the electric vehicle sector without succumbing to short-term market distortions. China's ascent in the electric vehicle industry, fueled by substantial government subsidies, 
precipitated a surge in production, accompanied by unintended consequences such as fraudulent practices and the abandonment of nearly new vehicles. The subsequent reduction in government subsidies exposed the vulnerability of many companies, resulting in a significant contraction in the number of electric vehicle manufacturers. This situation not only challenges the initial environmental goals but also serves as a cautionary tale regarding the perils of excessive government intervention in market dynamics. The presence of electric vehicle graveyards in China serves as a tangible reminder of the intricate interplay between industry, government incentives, and market forces. Here ends the video, my friends. If you liked the video, give me a wonderful like, comment and subscribe and L to not miss any of our trips. Until next time.